Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America. Check out the website, thisweekinamerica.us. Welcome to the program. Our special guest back once again is Dr. Martin Blank. He's an expert on the health-related effects of electromagnetic fields. He's been studying the subject for over 30 years. He has two PhDs from Columbia and the University of Cambridge. From 1968 to 2011, he taught as an associate professor at Columbia University. He now acts as special lecturer and is a member of the Department of Physiology and Cellular Biophysics at Columbia. I mentioned he was on the program with us before, and we had such response because this is such a a really important topic. We decided to ask Dr. Blank welcome to the program. First of all, welcome back, sir. It's great to have you back with us. Yeah, great to be back. You know, it's interesting. The name of the book, by the way, is Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. And the the topic says it all. What this is not speculation on your part. Science is really telling us there are some dangers out there. Yeah, I think it's a very important message because there are all kinds of confusing declarations being made by different people with different interests, and the public is confused. Uh, that on the one hand, they hear that it's entirely safe, all the standards that have been set are okay, and yet, if they were aware of the literature, the scientific literature, they would know that that's not true, because the cells are themselves are telling you that it's no good. Well, I mean, you can rely on what the publicity people are telling you, but you can also do experiments with cells, and the cells are unequivocal. They tell you exactly when something is wrong. They have their own reactions to bad stuff, and they give that reaction with this EMF that's around. And it's not only the power lines, which we were worried about, let's say, 20, 30 years ago, but it's now all these Wi-Fi devices that are being, uh, everybody's embracing them. And there's, you can understand why. They are terrific. I mean, you can do things. Like right now, we're hooked up with all kinds of fancy electronics. And the, the thing is that this is something that was never possible before. And, of course, young people who are growing up without knowing the past, but suddenly this is the new stuff. You see people, kids, teenagers, walking along the street with their devices in their hands. In fact, they're not even paying attention often to the people who are around them. So it's really taken over because it has tremendous appeal. But at the same time, you've got to be aware of the dangers that we are exposing ourselves to. And you will get a list of those dangers. And everything is documented. A number of studies that are quoted in the book, Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices by Dr. Martin Blank, our guest on the program. It's all outlined there. It is very easy to understand. You don't have to be a scientist to understand what it's telling us. And very basic, and then we'll, we'll get into what we really need to do, what we need to watch out for. Talk about the impact, the negative impact that electromagnetic fields have on, have on our cells. Well, the, the, the first thing that you've you got to realize is that the cell protects itself when there's bad stuff around, like if the temperature goes up or if there's acidity in the environment or if there's low oxygen. It starts to make a special class of proteins, there are about 20 of them, and these proteins are designed to help the cell cope with these dangers. It helps to protect the damage, to correct the damage, and so when you see these proteins, you know that the cell is in trouble. And this is what happens with very, very low uh, power frequency, very low intensity power frequency, and all the high stuff, you know, the, the powerful Wi-Fi that's around, and the stuff that you get from smart meters. These are things that are indicative. In other words, the cell is telling you. I mean, you don't have to ask a specialist. You ask the cell, and you know that there's something going on that should not be going on. The other bad thing about this is that the cell will make these special proteins when it's exposed to bad, bad influences. And then after a while, it habituates to it. So it, the protective part of the stress proteins is lost over time. Not lost completely, but it gets diminished over time. And so by exposing yourself continuously, then, or continually, that is sporadically, you will get a, uh, a decrease in the protective effects that, uh, that the body is capable of. You talk so, about smart meters in the book, o Overpowered. Let's talk about that, because for most people, they're like, I don't understand what he's talking about. These are what new residential utility meters, and maybe many of us have them and don't even realize it. Yep. The, uh, what's happened is you know that you pay for your electricity. You know, the uh, cost money to generate uh, power, electric power, and to transmit it and to keep the, air, uh, the sources repaired. 
uh, and you've been paying for it. And the thing is that the public was, it was suggested that the public could save a lot of money if they learned how to budget their energy use. And they could do that with a smart meter. So the smart meter was basically sold to the public as a way in which they could understand how they utilize the electric power and they could do so more economically. The fact of the matter is that very little of this, in fact, I don't know of any real application where people can actually get to use their uh, uh, their smart meter in a smart way. Basically, what the what the companies have done is they've insisted that people change over from the ordinary meter, which just uses tells you how much you're using, to ways in which you can program it. But unfortunately, people cannot program it. Many of the devices that were supposed to be programmed are not equipped with the electronics to interact with these meters. And the other thing is that these meters are in contact with the power companies that are supplying it. So they're telling the power companies how much electricity is being used by sending these messages back to the company. And the way they do it is the same way in which you use cell phones to communicate with someone else. They send these radio frequency signals, and they are filling the air with these kinds of signals that activate these dangerous reactions within the potentially dangerous reactions within the body. So uh, it, it's been something that was sold to the public with the promise that it's going to help them. But unfortunately, the help is not there if it will ever come. And the fact is that the people are exposed to far more danger than they were in the past. So I think that the, uh, it's important for people to realize that this is not a win-win situation. This is clearly something that you ought to be careful about and perhaps avoid completely. My advice is that there's really no reason for it. There's, people know that if you want to save on electricity, on the power, you just use less of it. You don't, and you figure out when you're going to use it. You know the company charges for uh, power at different, uh, different, time, at different rates at different times of day. So you can figure this thing out. The machine is not going to do it for you. You'd have to program it anyway. So you can do that thinking and, and apply it when, by yourself without the smart meter. The bad thing about this whole issue is that there are people who are being forced to do this, and they don't want it. And not only is it a question of they're not wanting it, it's a question of they are unable to stand this kind of exposure. There are people who are incredibly sensitive to this kind of uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation in the environment. Some people have moved away from, uh, from where they live because of these exposures. I mean, if you live next to a, uh, a, a in, in the house, an apartment, let's say, in a condo, where you've got a bank of these smart meters, wow. yes. uh, you, you're really getting blasted in many cases. And it doesn't take much to activate these bad effects. In other words, the, the body will respond at very, very low levels in this case. And the damage that's done is not all repairable. In other words, you, you, you know, we don't know too much right. about this stuff yet, but we do know that it does have harmful effects, and there are people who cannot survive in this kind of an environment. Dr. Martin Blank is our guest on the program, an expert on the health-related effects of electromagnetic fields. been studying the subject for over 30 years. His book is a must-read, Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. The obvious question people would have would be, how do I determine the levels at home, my office, in my car? And then after reading the book, I'm not real sure we even know what a safe level is. But first of all, how can we measure? Is there a way to measure uh, the strength of these? Yeah, there are devices that, that are out there on the market and that people can use to make these measurements. Uh, well, once you make the measurement, you'll have a number. But uh, you may not know what to do with it. Exactly, yes. The numbers that don't really tell you all that much because the numbers are set by agencies that have very little biology background. In fact, in many cases, I would say they didn't even consult the biology. What they did is they did the epidemiology kinds of studies where they check and see whether uh, people who are exposed for a, a long period of time will come down with certain diseases. For example, they've done a study on uh, brain cancer, gliomas that occur with cell phone users. 
and the cell phone users will, uh, after using it, and by the way, cancer doesn't show up immediately, so uh, if they've been using these uh, cell phones for about 10 years, there's a doubling of the risk, generally, roughly speaking. So you'll get, you have twice as much of a chance to get cancer of the brain when you've got this kind of exposure. So they, they figure that this is a, a pretty good indication that you should avoid that level of exposure where you have this uh, device electromagnetic field generator right next to your head for a certain length of time. But you can get this kind of exposure whether you, whether you realize it or not. It's not necessarily from uh, uh, Wi-Fi. It's not necessarily from uh, smart meters. There was a study done in uh, Switzerland, which is basically over the entire population, where they found that there was an increase in Alzheimer's disease for people who live very close to power lines. Now, this is a very different frequency. This is something that occurs at, uh, let's say, 60 hertz, or in Europe, 50 hertz, 50 cycles per second, whereas with Wi-Fi, you're talking about things that are in the, in the millions of cycles per second. So. But it doesn't matter. It's the, the radio frequency will, will do very much the same kind of stimulation of the biological responses as 60 hertz at power frequency. So it seems like the body is designed to see electromagnetic fields as a danger at a variety of frequencies. It doesn't have to be very fast like a cell phone, but it could be relatively slow as power frequency, the stuff that you just plug in and an electric light, let's say. All the so, chapters in Overpowered will get your attention. One that really jumps out is where you talk about children are at greater risk. And when you think about it, in many cases from the time they're born, and in some cases even while they're in the womb, they're being subjected to uh, electromagnetic fields. You talk about incubators, baby monitors that are, that are very common now. That's right. That's right. That we're... You cannot escape this. That's the point. It's just, it's really all over the place. Infants are particularly, and children are particularly vulnerable because they are, their bodies are growing. They, they are, the cells are dividing. The DNA is replicating. In other words, you, every time you get a new cell, you've got to fill it with the same kind of DNA information so it could do its business. And as a result, You've got all this activity, and when the activity occurs and there are electromagnetic fields around, this is when you get the oxidative damage. You get damage to DNA, which, if it remains there, is a mutation, and that's the first step, generally, in the development of a cancer. So that the dangers are much greater in children that, are, that have cells dividing very rapidly than in older people, mature people, where cells are relatively stable and only dividing when necessary to replace cells that are damaged or that have uh, outlived their usefulness. So the, the thing is that children have to be protected. And uh, not only, and in case of the cell phone in particular, the, uh, the children should not be exposed to it because their heads are different. They are not, their heads, by the way, are relatively large compared to their bodies when you compare it to an adult. It's a larger proportion of the body. But the fact is the cranium, the bone, the skull bone, is much thinner, which means that the radiation can penetrate to a greater extent. And not only that, the brain has not fully uh, myelinated. In other words, the nerves in there are not fully insulated. The lipid layer around them has not fully developed. So myelination is occurring while as a child is growing. And having less lipid in there means that the, the electromagnetic fields can penetrate to a greater extent. So while an adult may hold a cell phone next to his head and you'll get a penetration, let's say, maybe a couple of inches, it'll go much further in a child's brain because the material there is not, it is more conducive to the spread of this uh, radiation. For the so, first time, we've got kids that are growing up, they'll have a cell phone when they're seven, eight years old. They'll be in a, in a Wi-Fi hotspot, possibly even at home, certainly uh, becoming more common in the schools. When you talk with people, what response do you get? When you talk to college students, their lives totally revolve around their, their tablets, their cell phones, their smartphones. What kind of response do you get? Because for some, I don't think they want to believe it because they can't see it, they can't touch it, they can't smell it. Therefore, there's no harm. 
Well, that's certainly part of it. First of all, uh, teenagers and young adults think they'll live forever. Yes. <laughs> it's, great <that> they, <laughs> it's great to feel that way. Uh, even if intellectually they, ac- they accept the fact that lifetime is finite. But the fact is that the feeling is that they, ah, they can do anything, they can, no problem. But the, the fact is that these things, uh, there's wear and tear. And if you don't, don't take care of yourself, it's very easy to, to uh, uh, be run down and, and develop sickness and develop all kinds of other conditions. So I think the, ch- the young adults are becoming more aware of this. But what's happening is that there are also social pressures. One of the things that seems to be going on is that people are more attached to their electronic devices uh, than to, to other people. In yes. other words, they'd rather, yes. they'd rather communicate through this device than have to speak to them. Well, my wife and I were having dinner in a restaurant, and on the next table was a couple that were speaking on cell phones. <laughs> And, but not to each other. That, I, I, yes, yes. I can picture that because I've seen it myself. Yeah. And, uh, well, so, you know, I, I turned to, to, to the man and said, pardon me, I hope you don't mind, but could you tell me why, you know, you're doing this when you're having <laughs> dinner together, you know? And he, got, he didn't realize. He just said, gee, I didn't realize. You know, each one is so engrossed in their own daily affairs that they just don't think about the fact that they, uh, they should have their dinner together, it's a, which is not only a a nourishment occasion, but it's a social occasion, too. You exchange the information from the day's activities, and uh, you, you socialize, but not, no, they were carrying on the business that, they've been, that they're doing for the rest of the day. And it's th- this device. I saw an ad on the, uh, on the television where they, somebody had just filmed a group of teenagers walking along the street each one had one of these devices in his hand and was walking with it and paying no attention at all to the rest of the people. So it's kind of a sign of our times that this is the way people are developing. You know, rapidly running out of time. We're going to have to do a part three here because there are so many important things to talk about. In the minute or so we have left, is it possible to, to block? Is it possible to come up with some type of system that, that would block these, these electromagnetic fields? Well, I, uh, yes, I guess there, there are all kinds of shielding devices that one has. Uh, the easiest thing is distance. Distance is the, uh, you just try and get away from the source. You can, you can reflect these things, which is the, the, the best way you can do it. But the, uh, it's, the, other, the other great defense is if you can't beat it, you should at least do things to fight it in other ways. And people can, you know, the damage that's done by these electromagnetic fields can be not overcome, but certainly can be fought by doing things, by getting good nutrition, good rest, a lot of exercise. In other words, keep your body healthy, because a healthy body will be able to repair the damage. Sleep is very important, and rest is very important. That they, that's the time when the body recuperates. If it's got damage, a lot of the activity that's necessary for, for repairing the damage goes on during sleep. So that this is a very important aspect. So while one is trying to decrease one's exposure, one should also work on these other aspects, which are fully in our control. I should say fully, that they are the most that, uh, in our control, and we can be able to have an impact there. The program, the first program we did with Dr. Blank is available on our website. You can go directly there and, and hook up to YouTube. It's This Week in America.us, about 30 seconds left in the program. An important point about sleep, and you talked about it the last time, you really need to get good sleep, and you shouldn't have the smartphone near you for oh, several reasons, yeah. one being you're just getting these signals again all night long. That's right. By the way, men carrying this in their pockets are getting those signals because the smartphone, unless it's turned off, power off, you, they are in constant communication with, with the uh, towers so that they can, the towers can locate them in case a call comes in. So that it's always important to just power off if you're going to use it in your pocket or women tend to put these things in their bras. Turn the power off before you do that. You can always turn the power on when you want to check and see if there are any messages. Dr. Martin Blank has been our guest on This Week in America, an expert on the health-related effects of electromagnetic fields, been studying the subject for over 30 years. The book, an important one, is called Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. 
The book is available all across the country, information directly at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And as I mentioned, you can watch the first program we did with Dr. Blank on, on the website as well. Doctor, always a pleasure. Look forward to having you back. Thank you so much for taking time and sharing that with us today. Thank you. Well, thank you. You're listening to This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us.